Thanks for the support as a channel member, Kieran Hodgkinson. Yeah, absolutely. I, I wish him all the best as the new manager of Newport down in League Two. But with uh, with Mark gone and constant rumours in the media that you're looking to sell, what on earth are we going to do if we have a Wearmouthless club? We need we need your money and his his wonderful tactical input. Yeah, I mean, as long as you're not grooming him to be the next manager. Okay. Hello and welcome to part 45 of Homegrown. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, we have two games for you. We're at home against Bristol Rovers, away against Accrington, both in League One. And as you've just heard in the intro, this is now a one Wearmouth football club. And Mark Wearmouth, despite turning down multiple managerial jobs over the last couple of years, has now left the club to become the new manager of Newport County, who are in a relegation battle in League Two. He's a madman. I mean, there's there's other jobs he could have gone to. I don't know why he's gone to that one. Uh, but clearly, is up for a fight. It does mean that we've lost our assistant manager. We haven't yet appointed a new one, have we? Did I appoint a new one? No. Um, we haven't yet appointed a new one. So I'm flying without wing. I'm, I've got no I've got no safety net at the moment. Mrs. Wearmouth is still here, uh, but she is constantly there. She currently loves the club. She's currently though. Uh, being constantly being linked in the media with potential sales of the club. So fingers crossed, nothing uh, nothing emerges as true off there. Interesting. I've, I don't know, it's before that I was a club legend. That might be the first time I've been a club legend in FM21. Harrison Davies up there with me as well. I wonder if Slam Dunk wants to come back as assistant manager. Any problem is he doesn't have a scout, uh, staff profile, so I guess he's got no interest in being a member of staff. Ideally, in this situation, we do bring through one of our own former players, but none of them are old enough apart from Slam Dunk. Henry Barton's retired. I checked on him. Um, Kalala. Is he still playing? What was his name? Eve Kalala. He's a free agent. Do you want to be a staff? No, see, he's not a staff member. Uh, we're going to have to actually bring in uh, a grown-up, which is, it's less fun. I miss Mark already. I miss him desperately. Perhaps Harrison Davis should just be player assistant manager at 21 years old. He's the heart and soul of the club. As you can see as well, since we have left, we've not won a game either. Perhaps he was the talent of all this. That'd be a bit of a turn up if he was the one making it all happen all along. And this is what the league table looks like. 16 games played. We're still in a nice little spot. Fifth in the league. Uh, we've got a game in hand over the teams above us as well. Um, we're nicely in the playoff mix. As long as we finish in the top half this year, I'm comfortable um, we're probably not going to win the league because we're 10 points behind Colchester, but it's still early days. Anything can happen yet. And first up today, we're playing Bristol Rovers without an assistant manager. And this is the team we're putting out there for that game. We've got Wright in goal, a back four of Bachelor, Epiteta, Campbell, Charles and Brewerton, Bandera and Curry in midfield, Hamilton, who should be an inside forward, Hamilton and Redmond supporting Beareth and Jessup up front. So... I'm having to take on all sorts of extra responsibilities at the club without an assistant manager. I don't care for it at all. I've had to fiddle around with training myself. Um, luckily, I've just allocated that to one of the coaches now. But I initially had to fiddle with training. And now I've got to do a team talk without having an assistant manager to offer me his thoughts. Unacceptable. So I guess we'll just do the pump fists, pick bottom option all the way through until I have a new assistant manager. And we have put a job advert up, so hopefully... We are going to get some applicants in the near future. But I I, can't, I didn't really anticipate Mark Wearmouth leaving. Mrs. Wearmouth has been set up as the club owner, as loving the club, like maxed out loyalty. So fingers crossed she should never leave. Um, but Mark Wearmouth was set up as a family member of Mrs. Wearmouth. Couldn't make them married because it's not an option in the database. She's a bit weird. Um, I guess there's not a lot of women in the database. But who, who knows? Um, but yeah, it was, they were set up as relatives. He was set up as loving the club. Um, me and, no, I couldn't put me because I didn't exist yet, but Mrs. Wearmouth was on his favourite staff list. He loved the club and he had maximum loyalty as well. And I guess, he, like I say, he did turn down a number of jobs over the course of a couple of years. And I guess it just got to the point where he decided he wanted to go out on his own. It, it stings though. It stings to lose him. We'll keep an eye on how he gets on at Newport. 
it's not necessarily the end for Mark Wearmouth. If he goes there and he's a complete flop, we'll bring him back for sure uh, because Mrs. Wearmouth wouldn't have it any other way. But for now, we are, like I say, a one Wearmouth club. Ball over the top. Jessup is in and does, should have done a little bit better with the finish there, really. We have won a corner. Eight minutes gone. This would be a nice little opportunity to put us 1-0 up. It's going to be Redmond to take the in-swinger from this right-hand side. Beareth was in acres of space. He was unmarked there. And when you get a free header inside the six-yard box from a corner like that, you probably have to do a little bit better than just heading it into the hands of the opposition goalkeeper. Brewerton now with the long throw. Beareth again making a nuisance of himself next to the goalkeeper um, but couldn't properly connect with the ball. And uh, the highlight is continuing, which is an odd one. Um, Charles plays it forward looking for Redmond but doesn't find him. And worryingly, it looks like it might be Bristol Rovers who are going to get the chance off the back of this highlight, which isn't really what I was hoping to see when we started in their area, in the, basically in their half, almost in their penalty area with a set piece. But they are free on this right-hand side. Cross comes over and they've only gone and scored from it. Feels like there's too many letters in that guy's first name, but I imagine he doesn't mind. And it's 1-0 to Bristol Rovers. Bristol Rovers really are a bogey team of mine on Football Manager. Whether I'm managing them or managing against them, um, it never seems to go my way. The only time you see them win is when they're playing against me rather than when I manage them like I have quite a few times over the years. Two or three times, I think it is now. But seeing them go ahead in the tie in this manner does add further fuel to the fire that maybe Mark Wimmuth was the brains of the operation, which I won't stand for. I won't let it be said. But we're now 2-0 down. Oh, this isn't how it was supposed to be. We were... I mean, I know we are supposed to be in a relegation battle this year and Mrs. Wearmouth's happy with mid-table. But we started so well. We were top of the league for a little while. Beareth was in incredible form. I think he's still joint top scorer in the division. We're still only five points off the automatic promotion spot. So it's not as if we're completely falling apart. But this will be four games in the league now without a win if we don't turn things around in this game. And it's looking pretty unlikely that we're going to turn things around from here. We are being absolutely done over by the uh, by the XG, but it's not going so well. Right, go out there, give the fans their money. I mean, what? there's like nine fans here. That's the worst team talk I've ever done. I need an assistant manager to help me with my team talks. I, I mean, it's probably at least 90% of the time I go with whatever the assistant manager recommends. It's only when they're obviously wrong that I go against their recommendation. I'm having to think too much and I don't care for it. I don't come here to think. I came, I, I'm here for the puns. That's what this is supposed to be about. And now I'm having to think about football. Ridiculous. Curry with the effort from the edge of the area that goes a little bit over. There was a game not so long ago where Nathan Curry scored two just like that in the same game and then missed a penalty for his hat-trick. And he's he's not quite been the same player since missing out on that hat-trick, which I'm not going to worry about it yet, but it is uh, it is worth noting. Right, Hamilton is going to come off. We're going to bring um, Troy Cannon up front to go alongside Beareth. In fact, we're going to bring Pritchard on as well. We're going to go with Pritchard and Cannon. We need goals. We've talked about this a few times this season now. There will come times when those two will stop being as effective as they had been early on. And today might be the day, or the last couple of episodes, last couple of matches might be when the uh, Beerith and Jessup run of form might be coming to an end, and it might be time to give Pritchard and Cannon a little bit of a run. Although, to be honest, they've come on here, and neither of them seem to be doing anything more than what the two they've replaced were doing. So I think it's just not our day. The stats tell me we should have won. The result. Not very impressed. We've scored three times in four games. We've not won forever. We're now going away from home against Accrington Stanley, who are down in the relegation zone. Did we just get oh, impotent? I mean, of all the words they could have used. So Blackpool boss is Paul Chapman, who's my cousin. There's another Kevin Chapman in the league as well. I think Lincoln are managed by Kevin Chapman. There's... There's Chapmans everywhere. We're taking over. Lincoln. Yeah, Lincoln are also managed by Kevin Chapman. So, I mean, if you're called Chapman, you've got a good chance of being a football manager in this world, apparently. Maybe me for not much longer, though, if this carries on. Now, Wormuth's got a managerial job under his belt. He can come back and take over from me.
Right, we're, we're mixing things up a little bit today, trying a few different options. I'm very, very close to bringing Alex Williams into the team ahead of Captain Cartwheel. He's just been called up to the England under-19s. He's got five-star potential. He's a two-star current ability player, which makes him almost as good as Wright is already. I just, I'm terrified about a 17-year-old goalkeeper, to be honest. So Wright stays in in goal, um, but Andy Hall is coming in. I think this is his first start. Um, it is his first start for the club at left back. So Andy Hall's going to come in at left back. Charles Muir and Cissé, the rest of the back four. Bandera and Wenton in midfield. Hamilton and Jessup up front. Beareth and Cannon. Uh, sorry, Hamilton and Jessup out wide. Beareth and Cannon up front. I was very close to having Pritchard in for Beareth as well because Beareth is tiring. But the form that he's been in, it, it, you know what? I'm going to do it anyway. We're going to go with Pritchard instead of Beareth because of Beareth's uh, fitness levels. And we're just making big changes as we look to drag ourselves back into some kind of form. Um, I I do expect nothing but a win today after a bad run of results. We're playing against a team who are down in the relegation zone. I know that's where we were supposed to be at the start of the season, but I'd like to think by this point, we've now done enough to convince everyone involved in the club that we shouldn't be in a relegation battle. And then 16 seconds into the game against the team in the relegation zone, we do that. And Alex Williams gets closer and closer to a home debut because, I don't know, how much do we blame Captain Cartwheel for what we've just seen here? It's a good shot. I don't know that it's necessarily his fault, but what I do know is the match engine can find it a little bit difficult to show a really poor goalkeeper in-game. And we can't necessarily judge it just on what we're seeing in the highlights. And sometimes you just end up conceding lots of goals because your goalkeeper is not very good, even though they don't look like he's his, they're his fault. So Williams is going to get an opportunity sooner or later. We've got a Papa John's Mickey Mouse auto windscreen shield trophy Johnson's paint cup game coming up after this one that I'll be doing off camera. I think Williams is nailed on to start in that one, unless he's away on international duty. That'd be a bit of a blow. He's just been called up to the Engl England under 19s and it stops him making his home debut. Um, but he'll play in that. We'll see what we think. And that might be it for now. Look at Danny Pritchard getting his head down and run there. The turn of pace on the man. It was beautiful. You actually saw him get his head down and really go for it. And he ended up playing a decent pass through to Cannon, who just, and Cannon hasn't looked the same man yet this year. Um, Hall with the throw into the area. Hamilton has got under it and Hamilton is there. And it's a third goal of the season for Micah Hamilton. And we've got the equaliser after nine minutes, and that is an important goal. He's the kind of player that we need to be stepping up. We're having a one of the toughest runs of form that we've had in the history of the football club. Micah Hamilton is one of our best players, one of our longest serving players, one of our oldest players. We need the likes of Micah Hamilton to step up in situations like this and drag us forward. And that's, uh, that's what he's done there. Grabbed himself a goal, 1-1. Hopefully, we go on to win this game now. Now we've remembered how to score a goal... Fingers crossed, everything rolls on nice and easily from here. Although Hamilton, I don't know if he's taken a knock or he has taken a knock. Um, so he's going to have to come off, which is absolutely not ideal. But we need to protect him because, like I say, one of our best players, Zach Redmond's going to come on. And we're actually playing those two cutting inside, which we don't normally do. But And I don't know if it's a good idea to do it when we've got Pritchard up there. But this is what we signed these two to do. This is what I've been talking about for the two years I've been at the club. Through ball to Pritchard. Danny Pritchard is through and scores a goal of a man half his size. That is not how you get the best out of Danny Pritchard normally. He's turning into the complete forward. He's still only 21, remember? Um, lovely through ball from Jessup. This is, I mean, if Pritchard's going to stay in the team with these players playing like this, he's got to learn to do that kind of thing. And he's he's absolutely done it there. It's a goal for Pritchard. And it's 2-1 now. And Danny Pritchard, he's getting a run of games now. You know I love that man. He's back. I told you these two would be back. It's not taken long for Cannon and Pritchard to be back up front in this team again. Beareth's now got his work cut out to get back into the side. Um, right, don't let your performance levels drop. Let's not mess things up from here, eh? It would be lovely to, to grab a win, get back to winning ways. Because of the nature of the lower leagues... And the fact that teams rarely like full-on dominate, even with this poor run that we've been on, if we do end up winning here, 
we're still only four points outside of the automatic promotion spots, even after a really rough five game spell. So fingers crossed, we've not done too much harm and we should be getting a new assistant manager any time. Um, I don't know, quite know why the job advert is taking so long to get applicants. But as I have my own self-restricted rules of not going on the staff search screen, my option is promote someone from within or wait for applicants. And I'd be mad to promote someone from within until I've seen the applicants. So we kind of have to sit and wait and hope that we get someone in soon. Right, he's, rem he's heard me talking about Williams coming in and playing and he's now doing fancy saves for the cameras. Jessup with the free kick. It's an in-swinger. Charles is there. Oh, it's offside. I thought we were thought we were starting to come back to our former selves there. We were going to grab a grab another goal, start to run away with this game a little bit, but the referee's got other ideas. Um, Jessup wins the ball back immediately though from the goal kick, and Bandera finds Cisse, who's giving it to Pritchard again. Pritchard is getting all his service to his feet today, which is you would think he'd be having a bad game because of it, but he's not. He's actually linking things up really rather well. Cannon uh, plays it to Jessup, who shoots from range. And their goalkeeper again making the save. But at times, when the two wide players are tucking in like that, it's almost like we've got four strikers on. And their defence do seem to be starting to struggle with it a little bit. Went in um, with the header forward. Um, Redmond probably should have been a little bit more alert to it there. But he's given it off nicely to Hall there. Cannon's in. And again, Cannon not quite firing. Do you see what, do you see what I did there? Did you like that one? I like that one. Um, right. 20 minutes to go. It is Beareth o'clock, I think. Um, Cannon's going to come off. Beareth is going to come on and play as the advance forward, which he hasn't done for ages. Um, and then we're also going to bring on Popon for Bandera in midfield. 20 minutes remaining. We've just got to hold on. Um, it would be nice for us to go on and grab a couple more goals and show that we're back. But a win, a win is a win, and all we're really looking for is that win at the moment. Um, it doesn't matter how bad Accrington are and how poorly we're playing. If we can come away with three points, then it's it's a step back in the right direction again. Um, this should be the final highlight of the game. Redmond with the in-swing and Muir's in there, um, but couldn't connect. And now Accrington have got a chance for a counter-attack. Um, they've got um, two men up supporting. We've got we've got men back in numbers, luckily. Um, but they have kept hold of the ball here in the shot from range. Oh, if that goes in, right is done because they should never be scoring from there. Luckily, they didn't, and it's ended 2-1 to home. Um, it was a nice victory. Well done, boys. And hopefully, in tomorrow's episode, we have a new uh, a new assistant manager and maybe a new starting goalkeeper. We'll see how he gets on in this next game in the, in the Papa John's Trophy against Southampton under-23s. Probably the worst team to play him against, because if he has a good game, they'll just nick him from us. Um, but we're, we're going to get through to the FA Cup first round now, I think. And um, we'll do the FA Cup first round tomorrow with one of the games either side of it. And fingers crossed, we'll have uh, started to put some form together again off the back of that win. If you've enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos. And thank you very much for watching.